Hey folks, it's Mangirl. Welcome back to the channel. And I'm revisiting my Frankenstein Tango 2 Pro modification. This is the one I modified last year to put in the internal Express LRS module. So when you look at this, you can't tell, but there is a 250 milliwatt happy model module inside this right now. I'll link you in the video description to the original modification. But what I want to do now is to swap out that happy model module with this. This is a beta FPV Express LRS nano module 2.4 gigahertz. And thanks beta FPV for sending this to me for this modification. And the reason why I want to change this out is for a couple of reasons. Number one, this module goes up to 500 milliwatts, whereas the happy model was only 250 milliwatts. Also, this module is a lot easier to get a hold of. The module I used previously was the one that looks like Iron Man and it's become quite difficult to get a hold of. So let's start by doing a quick unboxing. We have the module itself and the old school wireless router antenna. And this is nice. They've included a Moxon antenna, which is what I will be using if I was using this in the original configuration. They've got a QR code and then they've got the user guide. And here you can see the refresh rates that support along with the output power. Now I suspect that this is a little bit outdated because I know the module does 10 milliwatts as well. So this is probably an older version of the firmware. So here you can see we can do 10 milliwatts, we can do 25, 50, 100, 250, and 500. So yeah, with the latest firmware, it does go down to 10 as well. And here's the module itself. It's got a button on there, it's got a light. This is, I think, a heat sink. So there isn't really much to it. Before we start modifying the module, you want to connect the module to a computer so we can update the Express LRS to the latest version. The good thing with this module is that you don't need external power, just connect it to the USB cable and your computer and it will connect just fine. Once connected, you want to use the Express LRS configurator, whatever is the latest version. I'll give you a link in the video description. Right now, latest version is 3.3.0 for Express LRS, and the configurator is version 1.6.0. And from here, we're going to go ahead and select what type of device we have. So we know it's a beta FPV 2.4, and we know that it is a nano transmitter, so 2.4 nano TX. And then here you can set up some additional settings. So this is my bind phrase. You use this on all of your devices. So on the transmitter, on the receiver and so forth. I also have this turned on as well. So very default settings, I use this for everything. And then down here, you wanna see which of your communication ports shows Silicon Labs. For me, it says communication port nine, COM nine. I'll select that. And then all you gotta do now is click on flash. So this will go ahead and it'll build the actual version of the Express LRS and then it will connect and start updating your module. So it'll probably take a couple of minutes to do this. And then finally it'll say success and the light on the module will turn back on again. Connect our Tango 2 Pro to the USB cable. We'll select the USB storage connection method and then we'll come here, click on download Lua script, and we wanna put this Lua script onto our Tango 2 Pro. So you should see two devices show up, USB drive and Tango 2, you want the USB drive. We'll go under scripts, we'll go under tools, and then we'll stick this Lua script over here. To tear it apart, I'm gonna use my favorite screwdriver here, the P80, link in the video description. And there are just four screws here, four Phillips screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these up. And then we'll take a look and see how the inside looks. Oh, that's interesting. So there's a cable connecting it to the back. I like that we have an RF shield here. The Happy Model did not have that. So this looks good. We'll have to see what that does for compatibility with the internal uh, modification to Tango 2 because it is pretty tight in there. So this will make it a lot thicker. We'll have to see how that looks like. Let me just pull this apart now. It just seems to pull out, no screws. Okay, yeah, so this this definitely is a heat sink. Okay, so there isn't really much to it. I like the fact that it, it is a USB-C down here as well. Now that we have our module updated to latest firmware and we have taken it apart, we need to start removing components to make this as small as possible because the real estate in the Tango 2 Pro where this sits is very, very small and very tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this big button, 
We don't need that. And just look at how much it protrudes from the board. So that button's gonna come off. We don't need the USB port anymore because we can do firmware updates through the controller and we can also do it through Wi-Fi. So that's gonna come off as well. Again, we need to make this as thin and small as possible. I'm also gonna cut the board. You see where the board protrudes out? I wanna cut this all the way back to where this capacitor is. I'm also gonna remove this connector here. Again, we need to make this as thin as possible. So that connector is coming off. And then finally, I'm gonna remove the SMA connector up here, and I'm gonna install a UFL. The other option is you could go ahead and solder your antenna directly to the connection points here. The first modification is complete. You can see I got the button off. So all I did was I heated up one side, and as I was pulling the button, the other side came off. So it's not very well soldered down anyway. So you can be pretty rough with it and it'll just pop right off. And really the key to the removal is to use a big soldering tip like this. So you can see how big this tip is. And this really helps with the removal. Next, we're gonna remove the SMA connector and I'm gonna put my soldering iron on the hottest temperature and I'm just gonna heat it up from, let's say the bottom. So I'm just gonna to try to get as much heat into this as possible. And the trick is you want to just heat up the whole thing and then it'll just slide right out. Oh, and there we go. So you can see it came out really nicely, nothing got damaged. So that the secret is lots of heat and then just wait for it to heat up. And you do want to go ahead and make sure that you desolder that center point. And once you do that, it just falls off very easily. For the USB port, I'm gonna try the same idea. I'm gonna try heating it up and then seeing if I can get it off of there. And we probably are gonna damage or lift some of these traces, but that's fine. We, we don't need this port anyway, we're done with it. We do have to be careful on this side because there are little components. So I'm gonna probably try to heat it from this side instead. Okay, so with enough heat, the case came off. So now I should be able to get this piece off. We got it off, let's just clean it up a little bit. So this looks pretty good. I made sure none of these are shorted together. So next we can go ahead and remove this connector here. And for this connector, I'm gonna start by just cutting the plastic off. I'm gonna remove as much of the plastic as possible. So just by picking at it and using the side cutters, I was able to get it down to this. So now I'll go with the soldering iron and just remove the remainder. And there we go, we have removed all the components that we need to remove. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the bottom right up against that capacitor. And here it is after the sanding, you can see I sanded the bottom down to right up against that capacitor. And then I also did the same thing with the top. So the top, this section here and this section here, it was a little bit protruding, so I just flattened the whole thing out. Now the final modification, we need to put the antenna connector. So the middle solder point here, this guy here, this goes to the middle of the UFL, and then this one and this one, along with this one and this one, those are the ground points which go to the outside of the UFL. And here are the ports themselves. I purchased a 10 pack from Amazon. You definitely want to buy extras. If you make a mistake and you put too much heat in them, they do melt. So it took me two tries to get it correct on my last board. Here's the first attempt. You can see how I positioned it because the middle connector that comes out of this side it only goes to about the middle. So I try to position it so that it seems to work okay. 
Now I'm going to check with the multimeter to make sure I have no shorts. If I have a short, I have to redo this. All right, moment of truth. I've got my meter in continuity mode. So if they are shorted together, you will hear this. So just to show you, if I was to touch these two, you see how they, they ring. Now I need to get uh, the outside of the connector and the inside. Oh, so I think we, we are successful. So if I touch the outside, of course it rings. If I touch the inside, we're okay. If I not touch this point and the inside, So that's good. If I touch the outside and the outside, we're good. Okay. First piece you're going to need is this happy model uh, module bay kind of attachment. So there are two versions of this. There's this guy here, which is designed for lower power modules. And then there's this guy, which actually connects into the battery. Now, based on me having both of these and doing some work on the multimeter, it looks like this one is going to be a better match for what we're trying to do. We can actually get this guy working without this board. So you can see this board doesn't have too many components in it. Whereas the TBS board has all these components on this piece here. So I think this is going to be a better match for us. Plus we can put in a higher power module. You can see I've already removed the back plate of the controller. The manual for the controller has really good instructions on how to do that. And once you remove the back plate, you need to make sure that your TBS Tango is the proper version. So you can see I am version 1.1 and I've got this little attachment here. If yours does not have this little uh, ribbon cable attachment, of course the cable won't be there, but I've got the little connector there. If yours doesn't have that connector, then unfortunately you have to upgrade your motherboard. What you want to do is you want to go under menu. You want to go down all the way to a section called external RF. So where is it? External RF. Right there, external RF. And you're going to set this to crossfire because Express LRS does use crossfire as its communication protocol. Now, ultimately the Express LRS module will sit over here. You can see I've got a piece of double-sided tape and then you want to align the top of this with the edge of this metal heat shield down here. So it's not too far down or too far up. And then go ahead and shrink wrap that. I've got this piece of 1.3 inch uh, shrink tubing, and I'm gonna go ahead and shrink tube this, and this will keep this from shorting out on any of the other components, but also it'll help keep this connector for the antenna plugged in. Unfortunately, you do have to remove that connector. Otherwise, this will not fit in properly and it'll interfere with the power button of the remote. So removing it gives you just enough clearance for this to work. Ultimately, this is the positioning that seems to work and it's so tight, I had to remove the heat shrink from this bottom section here. And the issue is there's a little tiny capacitor down here that's touching the headphone jack here. And that little bit of space there is causing this board to interfere with the power switch. So this seems to work okay now, but I think if you have issues, find out exactly where that capacitor touches the headphone jack. And what you can do is just grind away at the headphone jack in that area a little bit, because you don't need much. You can see here that by removing that little tiny, probably one or two millimeters of the heat shrink was enough to make this work. So you'll have to fiddle around with the positioning quite a bit to make it work. So this is definitely a lot more finicky than the happy model because the happy model, you can see the bottom part is very flat. So you don't have the same kind of issue with the fitment, but ultimately it seems to work okay now, but just, just bear with it. It will fit, but you do have to make sure that you get it in the absolute correct position. Just go ahead and solder it up, no different than before. First wire is the signal. Next one is nothing. Next two is the power. Next two are your ground. And that should be it. So we can go ahead and put this back together now. Now it's time for the heat test. You can see I have it set to 500 milliwatts with dynamic power turned off. It is connected to a receiver. I'm gonna wait five minutes and then I'm gonna quickly tear this apart and see what the temperature is. It's been five minutes. Let's look at the temperature. Okay, this isn't too bad. I'm getting between 40 and 48, 49, 50. Okay, so let's say between 50 and 
40 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's not, that's not too bad. And we're put back together. Let's do a quick power on. Welcome to Tango 2. Okay, we're on. If I hold down the menu button, I can navigate over to my Express LRS. And when I do that, yep, the module is connected, beta FPV. I run 150 hertz and I've got it set to max power of 500 milliwatts. Dynamic power is on. I'm using the antenna I created, which has both the crossfire in here along with the Express LRS. I'll link you to the video of how I did that. I'm not going to redo that video. So now all that's left is to go out there and do a quick test flight. And we're back from the test flight. Everything was pretty uneventful, worked as expected, no real surprises or, or issues. The only thing I noticed when I was trying to pull in the flight footage for, for the final edit here was that the OSD in the upper left corner where it's supposed to give you the transmission power of the module, it was showing zero. And I did some troubleshooting. I found the issue to be this switch mode. By default, it shows hybrid. You need to flip that to wide. Once you do that, that will resolve that issue. Otherwise, everything worked as expected. So make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And hopefully this is a good option for those of you who need more TX power or who can't get a hold of the happy model um, Iron Man module.